Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. The hidden cause of chronic disease, oxalates. What is it? How do we get it? How do we remove it from our body? And how do we prevent what we call oxalate dumping? So let's get right into it. Hidden cause of chronic disease, oxalates. Oxalate is basically a tiny molecule made up of an oxalic acid plus a mineral. It's naturally occurring, right? And 80% of what we call kidney stones is calcium oxalates, right? So it's acylic acid plus a calcium. It's an anti-nutrient. It steals minerals from our body. Magnesium, calcium, iron, zinc, and copper, okay? Plants use oxalates for mineral management, seed germination, and self-defense. It's just a protective mechanism for the plants. So what contains oxalates? Spinach, rhubarb, beet greens, chard, nuts and seeds, figs, cocoa powder, basically chocolate, kiwi, certain teas will all have higher levels of oxalate. There is an exhaustive list that you can uh, look up and I'll try to provide a link uh, for all the different types of foods that have high oxalates in the description below. 20 to 40 percent of oxalates are consumed, right? That means 60 to 80 percent of it is metabolic waste material from our natural processes. So our body has natural processes that will produce oxalates, but it needs to get it out of our body or excrete it through our body, okay? Fun fact, two cups of spinach uh, along with your green smoothie will have 1,500 milligrams of oxalates in there, which is a lot of oxalates that your body needs to process and get out of our system. Why are oxalates bad? It's corrosive to the GI tract. It can uh, cause kidney stones, and it deposits into your arteries as well as other tissues in our body. It can impact the nervous system, the brain. It depletes your glutathione stores, which are antioxidants. Impacts connective tissue, so you can experience joint pain. And then recovery might not be good after like uh, aggressive exercise. You can still experience uh, joint discomfort or soreness because of it. It also depletes B6 and biotin uh, when you have high oxalate levels. So, why would our body produce or increase metabolic waste of oxalates? If you have low levels of B6, your oxalate levels can go up. High doses of vitamin C or IV vitamin C can also increase oxalates in our system. Aspergillus fungi, basically um, from nuts and seeds, sometimes it contains it, or a contaminated home that has mold will have aspergillus. So that would also increase your uh, oxalates. Dysbiosis, inflammatory bowel disease, gastric bypass, all can increase oxalate in our system because it's not binding correctly in our GI tract and being excreted out. So dysbiosis, inflammatory bowel disease, gastric bypass. Another one is antibiotics. Antibiotics will not only kill off infection, which you may require, but it also decimates our gut uh, bacteria. And certain bacteria will break down oxalates. So you need these uh, microbiome um, in abundance to break down oxalates in our system. So antibiotics can be a factor here. Oxalates are excreted through the feces as well as the kidney. About 40 to 50 milligrams per day is, is processed through the kidney. Oxalate levels or oxalate issues is really not an allergy or a sensitivity to oxalates. It's more of a toxicity, okay? Now, to test for oxalates, there's no real good methodology. You can check in the urine and the blood, However, they've done studies where uh, people have oxalates in their kidney, 
but they're not really excreting it in their urine when they check their urine because it's all getting embedded into the kidney. All right. So there's no real best test. However, if you really want to go ahead and try testing for it, there's something called an organic acid test. And I use a company called Great Plains Lab. And you can run this organic acid test and it can give you clues to oxalate levels in our body. All right. Now, strategies. Before I talk about strategies, let's talk about what we call oxalate dumping. So if you have a lot of oxalates in your diet and you have high levels in our body, if you go and um, just go completely oxalate free, let's say you go carnivore, okay, and you're basically eliminating all these plants and seeds and things like that, and your oxalate levels in your serum or blood will drop, that may cause your body to release oxalates, meaning things uh, that are embedded in the tissue, whether it's your intestinal lining, your kidneys, your uh, liver. When your serum level goes down uh, of level of oxalates, then your body will dump whatever oxalates it's embedded in the tissue, creating symptoms related to oxalates. So you have to be very careful to prevent that from happening. So here are some strategies to prevent oxalate dumping and some of the symptomatology. One, you want to probably not go cold turkey, right? Don't go eliminating oxalates completely from your system. You want to have a little bit or just reduce down and gradually go down uh, in terms of oxalate load, okay? You want to eventually work it down to less than 50 milligrams of oxalates per day. You definitely want to increase your water content or water intake because it will help flush our system. You want to use calcium and magnesium citrate because the citrate version will help bind the oxalates in our system. So you can use 500 to 1000 milligrams of calcium citrate, 3 to 400 milligrams of magnesium citrate, and then you can also use potassium or potassium citrate up to about 1000 milligrams. You can take that every day, and, or you can put it into a, you know, a jug of water, and you can sip it all day long to help prevent some of the oxalate dumping and also help improve oxalate clearance out of our system. B complex is important, especially B6, but thymine is also very important, so you want to be able to take a B complex that has good forms in there. Boiling your fruits and, uh, I mean, boiling your vegetables might be very beneficial in reducing the oxalate load. Some studies show anywhere from 30 to 85% reduction in oxalates by just boiling the vegetable. You can also use chondroitin sulfate because sulfate is another one that helps bind. And you can also use biotin because uh, it depletes biotin in our system. So you want to use biotin. There's a couple of bacteria that have enzymes that break down oxalates. Lactobacillus acidophilus, as well as Bifidobacterium lactis, help break down oxalates in our system. Sometimes it's genetic, so you have to look at your genetic SNPs and, and, and look at it um, uh, to manage some of the um, oxalate toxicity issues. You can use lemon and water or apple cider vinegar to help uh, minimize some of the impacts of oxalate dumping. You can also use an Epsom salt bath. Um, the magnesium salts will be beneficial in terms of helping binding the oxalates out of our system. So that's a lot of information and probably there's a lot more that I didn't cover in this video. What I'll do is I'll link some uh, research articles and some um, good resource sites that help you uh, look at oxalate and oxalate dumping and the problems with overload of oxalates. A good resource is probably Sally Norton. She wrote a book. Uh, I'll link that below. And she talks a lot a bit about, about basically oxalates and the toxicity that it can create in our system and chronic disease. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung. We're at Clinical Excellence Meets Excellent Results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.